Hallelujah. We, we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We Thank you, Father. We exalt you. Glory. We exalt you, Lord. Our God is worthy to be exalted. High above the earth. Amen. High above the earth. He is high and lifted up. 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 He is high. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says that praise is comely. It says praise is comely. It says offer unto him the fruit of your lips. It says that he's jealous. Amen. He's jealous. And if most of what we have to say with the breath that he gives us is not praise, he's jealous. Amen. And so we should practice not only when we come together in the house of the Lord, but we should practice praising him not for any other reason other than the fact that he deserves praise. If we don't praise him, the rocks will praise him. And he'll find someone else to praise in our place. God has already done pretty much the best he's going to do for you and me up to this praise level. He doesn't do more to get us to praise him more. We need to praise him for what he's already done. Because he's already been overly gracious to us with the breath in our body. I was walking the other day. I had surgery, this corporal tunnel, and I was coming out of Walmart, and I was just shaking my hand. I wasn't complaining, but I was just like, man, I ain't ready for this right hand. I was coming out of Walmart doing this like, man, this is something else. And this brother was coming in, and he had a short sleeve on, and he had a nub right here. And he was coming in. I saw him coming in. Right after I looked at my hand doing this, he was coming in. And I said, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> Do you hear me? He was coming in shopping. Because I was thinking about all the stuff that this was still hindering me from being able to do. You know, I had to be careful. I hit it. Oh, that hurts. You know, getting in and out of stuff. And this brother was coming in. I was going out. The center door. He was coming in, and his had been cut off at the muscle. And I was like, Lord, I can't imagine it. You hear me? You better weigh these while you got them. You better better do something with them while you got them. You hear me? Because that that little scar right there has changed my life for a minute. And, and I, maybe I was complaining in my heart. I wasn't saying thank you. I was like, man, this thing here, man. You know, I got to be careful. And I looked up. That brother was about where Brother Larry was. And he was shaved off at the nub. And I was, I just said, Lord Jesus, thank you. Now you imagine, huh? We take too much of And I hate that we have to put guilt on us. But we take too much much for granted. So you better praise him while you So let's just lift them up one more time. Amen. Shake them while you got them. (laughs) Amen. Dance while you can. Yeah, it's okay. Dance while you can. Move them while you got them. Go get a hula hoop. If you can find one and, and work it in the living room or somewhere, <laughs> for they have, you have hip replacement. <laughs> okay. Well, God bless you.
Thank y'all for your help. Thank you. Thank you, praise team, and thank you. Amen. Praise God. Just, let's just remember the praise team is only to help prime the pump. Amen. Then you got to get your own water after that. Amen. Well, today, amen, we, uh, we have a special guest here. Amen. And going to share the word with us, and that's our own first lady. Amen. She's, gonna, she's got amen. something she's going to share. I asked her if she would do this. So I want you to stand on your feet and receive her. Her name is amen. Sister First Lady Janelle Conley. Amen. And you can go there or you can sit here, wherever you're comfortable. You want to sit here? You stand? Okay. All right. So uh, let's give her another warm welcome. Amen. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's the one that we're here to truly, truly give glory and honor to. So just let's just give continue. Let's give him a bigger, yeah. bigger. Hallelujah to the land. Praise. All right. We Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God, we Hallelujah. Give you glory. glory to God. We there, thank you. You may, be, you may be seated. Hallelujah. I know. My feet was hurting a few minutes ago, so I had to sit down for a minute, but I'm okay now. But I give, uh, again, glory and honor to God, who is truly, truly worthy to be praised, and I thank him. I give honor to Pastor Conley, uh, my husband, and uh, my covering. I thank God for him and to uh, the other ministers and household of, and just the household of faith, brothers and sisters. I um, truly want to give honor to the mothers of today. Today is the day uh, to honor mothers and mothers. Stand up, mothers. Stand up, mothers. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give ourselves, men, give us a hand clap of praise. All the ladies in the house stand up because I know you have truly mothered nieces and nephews and, and even some of us. So thank God for all the women in the house. Ladies, sit down. Brother, stand up. Amen. Let's give honor to our brothers, too, and the Father. Stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. You've been inspirational in our lives as well, and we thank God for you. Um, I just counted an honor and a privilege to be able to uh, stand here today because I, uh, that song really blessed me. It's okay not to be okay, it's all right, not to be all right, and because earlier this morning I was really struggling, and I uh, told Pastor Conley I was just full of tears this morning, and I said, I don't want to cry, I don't want to get up there with a bunch of tears, I want to be able to encourage somebody else, but my heart just got so heavy, heavy, thinking about uh, the loss of my mom, and this is the first Mother's Day she hasn't been here but I know she's here in spirit. I know she's uh, she's Amen. smiling wherever Amen. she is. I know she's in the bosom of Abraham, Abraham waiting for that great day. So with that, I find joy. I find Amen. joy in when I think about her, and I know she would be happy to hear me standing uh, up here encouraging. Will somebody give me my glasses out of there? Because I know I can't see without my glasses. It's in a, um, a blue case inside of there. Thank you. So, with, and I know she would be happy to um, know that I'm encouraging somebody and I'm speaking a word from heaven, from God. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Conley, when he asked me to do this, I thought, okay, it's 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 been a minute. And he says, come what may, regardless of what what comes, what goes on in your life, are you sure you're gonna? stand before God and, and preach and, and encourage the, the people of God. I said, yes, sir, I will. And, you know, this morning I almost went to him and says, I can't do it. But I, I remembered what my promise was to God at first Amen. and my the promise to him. Amen. So I thank God for this opportunity. And as we know, there's a lot of mothers in the Bible that we could really talk about. The number one mother was Mary. Uh, mother of Jesus, Jesus, so we know there's a lot of mothers, but I just want to talk from my heart, and I'll give you some scripture in a minute. Amen. So when I thought about mothers and, and how 
great it is to be a mother, I start thinking about um, how do I celebrate being a mother? And I, I celebrate being a mother just because of my children and they, they are blessed. I know my children are blessed. I know the fruit of my womb is blessed and I think it's in Luke, Luke 1 and 42. I, we don't have to go there, but I know the fruit of my womb is blessed and that's talking about when Mary and Elizabeth first met and how the, womb, uh, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped. And that's how I feel a lot of times when I think about my children, I think about how blessed I am to have them, how, how blessed. And I hope each one of us as mothers feel blessed to have children because it's, um, it's not easy. It's not always been easy. It's always been a struggle. And I think about, but it's worth it. Everything that we've been through as a mother is worth it. And we, we see our fruits right now, and we're going to see more fruits if we just continue to remember that our children are blessed. God don't make no mistakes. Amen. I don't care Amen. how old I was, uh, 17 when I had my first child, and I thought then that it was a mistake, but to God be the glory as Amen. I grew and I learned a motherhood, what motherhood was all about, I knew it was not a mistake, and Amen. I thank God for my children. I have five children. I have two biological children, and I have three bonus children. Amen. blessed children Amen. and so I call them all blessed and 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 blessed and I thank God for them um, I thank God that my children especially my daughter I, I appreciate her for being here and staying steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the works of the Lord regardless of what comes she's able to keep pressing and I thank God for that Amen. and our four sons they are they love the Lord. I thank God that they have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior because Amen. they could be Muslims, Amen. they could be worshiping any other God, but they still know who God is Amen. regardless of what they are doing and who they are, who they think they are in this world, but they know who God is and they know where their foundation was laid. And I thank God for the power of being able to be a praying mother, Amen. a mother I celebrate that, that because there's a lot of mothers that don't pray. Amen. There's a lot of mothers that don't pray. They don't know how to pray. They don't even realize that it's the power of the Holy <coughs> Ghost that keeps their children going. So mothers, keep praying for your children. Amen. The power of praying, we, we will see it. We see it right now. We've seen it in the past, and we're going to continue to see it. Um, let me stop right now. I We've already prayed, but let me... Just ask God to take the nervousness out of me yes, and just God. to go ahead yes, and, and speak his word. Father God, I come right now in the name of Jesus, yes, giving you glory and honor, lifting you up right now because, God, you are truly worthy. Yes, I thank God. you for this opportunity to speak your word, to encourage someone. God, I thank you right now that my words and your words will not fall on deaf ears. God, yes, that somebody will be edified and will be blessed in, in this message. And I thank you right now for using me because you could have used anybody else to deliver your word. Not only the people here in this building, God, I pray for the ones that will hear this on social media, God. I pray that they will be blessed and they will receive whatever it is that you have for them. I know there's a lot of mothers out there today. There's a lot of mothers here that Lord, that people are dependent on, and they feel like the weight of the world is on their shoulders, God. So I pray right now that you will touch every heart and mind and soul, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, they will receive your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So with that said, uh, I know this is a real popular scripture, but go to First Timothy, um, Second Timothy 1 and 5. 1, yeah, Second Timothy sure I got the right scripture here. Mm -hmm. It's talking to Paul, it's talking to Timothy there. Somebody have it, read it for me, please. And I call to remembrance. Second Timothy 1, and just start at the beginning, yes. Oh, Second Timothy 1, Second Timothy 1 and 1, yes. Okay. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according mm -hmm. to I'm 
on. Yes. When I call to remembrance the unfinished faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in my grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, mm -hmm. and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the oh, gift yes. of God, which is in thee, by putting on of my hands. Mm -hmm. Yes. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, Hallelujah. You can stop right there. Stop right there. When I think of that scripture, I think of grandmothers. And I know some of us are grandmothers. Amen. We're mothers. Amen. But God, Paul talked to Timothy about his grandmother and mother and the influence that they had on his life. So some of you need to stop and think about your mothers and your grandmothers that was influential in your life. This was a rough time for Timothy during this time, and he needed to be encouraged. And thank God that he thought about his mother and his grandmother to encourage him. So when I think about it, I've never had a grandmother in my life, Amen. ever. So, but I thank God that I've had aunts that were grandmothers to me. And I, I think of one specifically, she was my Aunt Helen. And she was so, so uh, rooted and grounded in the word of the Lord, even while we were growing up. And we thought she was just so old fashioned. We just thought nobody wanted to go over Aunt Helen's house. But as we grew and grew and started to become older, we were happy to go around her and sit and be blessed and just listen to her and listen to her discipline. And, and um, it took us, we were in our 20s because she was that aunt that always disciplined us and always gave us the socks and the, and the apples and oranges for Christmas. She didn't give us the toys and all the good stuff that the other aunts gave. So, but she was, she was my mother's, um, mother's sister and she was so awesome so awesome as I think about her she was almost 90 when she passed and she sowed a lot of good seed into our family so I thank God and today I wish if you have grandmothers I know uh, I'm trying to think of whose grandmother is here sister Aisha your grandmother is here so be happy that you have a grandmother to sow into your life and to give you great discipline and to just give you wise counsel and just always remember her as you grow older and older and older. She's going to be here with you until the Lord comes back. But while she's here, listen to what she has to say. So, and for some of you that still have your mothers here, listen to them. I mean, I don't care how old we are, how old we are, our mother can always sow goodness into us and give us wisdom and knowledge. I was listening to something this morning, he, uh, a gentleman over the radio, and he was talking about when we're 10, we think our mothers are the world. We think that they can do everything, but when we become um, 20, 18, we think they can't do nothing. They don't know nothing, they can't do nothing. But then when we become like maybe 25 and 30, we start thinking, Okay, well, maybe, maybe they know a little bit, but not a whole lot. They, they can't still tell us a whole lot. But then as we become 35, we start calling and asking for their opinions about stuff. And then when we become 45, we can't do nothing without calling and asking them Amen. <laughs> for, for advice. And then when we become 55 and 65, 75, we wish we had them here to be able to call them and talk to them and ask for advice. So as we go through our different seasons and phases of life, we need to remember mothers are important. It doesn't matter how old we are, how old they are, and mothers need to be needed, y'all. We need to be told that we are loved, that we, are, we mean a lot. So go home, Sister Mimi. Tell your mama how much you love her. Tell her how much she's needed, how much you Amen. love her. Amen. Brother Zamir, tell your mama how much you love her and how much she's needed and what she means to you. Amen. Sister Regina, go tell me and Sister Maxine how much you love us and how much we, yes, you uh, need us. Amen. Pastor Roslyn, Amen. go tell 
Sister Greta, how much you love her and how much you need her and how much she means to you. Shauna, continue to tell her. Continue to tell her, London, tell your mama how much you love her, how much you need her. Brother Lawrence, Brother Mario, Sister Lynn, Sister Kamisha, tell them how much you love Amen. your mom and how much Amen. she means to you. Amen. While you still have her here, and I, Mama, I still love you, and you mean a lot to me. Yes, and I know you're here with me. Um, I want to also. I wrote myself so many notes, y'all, and I'm just I'm not able to even stay on track with it. I, so again, I want to celebrate um, that my children are still here, Amen. and that they are still alive and they're still healthy. And I want to celebrate. I know each and every last one of you, I feel like you're a part of my extended family, my children. I know I've touched each and, la each and every last one of you on a personal note. Amen. So I feel like you are my children, too. Amen. There's not one of you in here that I don't have the motherly love for, the sisterly love for, and just the Christian love for, the agape kind of love. And also... There's some things in my motherhood that I regret and I wish I could do over again. So if there's any Amen. mothers out there, Amen. listen to this. Because I didn't have a, someone to just really, really sow into me the spiritual principles. I thank God for my mother. She's a hardworking Amen. woman. She thank loved you. God, went to church all the time. But to really sit me down and really tell me, read this word to me, help me study this word, and help me know the principles of what it meant to live a godly Christian life, that part I really, really uh, missed out on. But I thank God that you today have that opportunity with your children, mothers, Amen. and social media. Take the time to sit down and sow into your children. Take the time to, to read the word to them. Take the time to study the word with them. It means a lot, and you, the children, your children will always grow up. They will always grow up and they will not depart from it. If you will just, they may stray away a little bit, but they'll always come back. I remember as a young mother, sometime I would sit my boys down, but I didn't really know exactly how to sit them down and talk to them until I became way over into my 30s. But I regret not having those special moments with them to every night call them in and let's pray together, every day call them in and let's pray together, put my arms around them and give them encouraging words. Mm -hmm. Children need to be encouraged. Amen. Children need to know that their mothers are praying for them. Children Amen. need to know that their mothers are in their corners, regardless of what they go through. Children Amen. need that. So I regret not knowing that when I had children, smaller children. But now that they're grown and in their 40s, I tell my children all the time how much I love them, how much I appreciate them, how much I pray that they will just get grounded and rooted in the word and not turn back regardless of what come. And that is going to come to pass one day. I will see my children here serving the Lord. My uh, One of my sons is moving back here in December, and he's excited about being a part of this great ministry. He's a, he's excited about being a part of this great ministry, and I'm going to be, we're excited to have him to be a part of this great ministry. So you guys pray for him. And if there was just anything that I could do over as a mother, I would, I would, oh God, I would give more quality time with them unless I would sacrifice a lot more. I would Amen. sacrifice a lot more. There's some things that I sacrifice that I wish I hadn't, but there's some things that I would have sacrificed that's detrimental to my children now. Instead of spending so much time in me, I would have sold more, more time into them. I sacrificed a lot when it came to finances and stuff, trying to make sure that they had everything a two-parent family have. And that wasn't really the most important thing. I was trying to sacrifice my time and, and just to make sure that they had the latest Jordans or the latest PlayStations. But that wasn't important. That's not important, mothers, I'm telling you. That's not the most important thing that you can give a child. Amen. You can give them love and the Amen. word of God and prayer Amen. and encouragement. That's what's more important than a PlayStation or, or tennis shoes or a nice car or nice clothes. Mothers, sow into your children. Sow into your children the word of God. Take the time to wait on God. Wait on God before you have children, first of all. 
wait on God to send you. That's one of the things that I regret, and I know I can't take it back, but I w wait, wish, I pray that I, I regret that I didn't wait on God for a godly man to come into my life and to help me raise my children. So women, it's okay. We got them. Do your best by them. But if you don't have children, wait on God. Wait on him to send you a father, send you a spouse. I mean, to send you a spouse and a father for your children. I'm telling you, you will be blessed if you just hold on, hold on and wait, wait on God. And one other thing I want to tell the children, I've talked to the mother. I just want to real quickly tell the children that are here today to love your mother unconditionally. Love her unconditionally. Amen. Love her when she's old. Love her, love her when she's young. Love her when she's old. Amen. Just love her. Love for who she is. Love her when she gives you, when she doesn't have anything to give you. Amen. But love. Amen. Love her anyway Amen. in spite of. Children, Mimi, I keep looking at you in London and Asia and Zamir, but... I'm even talking to the children in social media. Give your mother a hug, an affectionate hug. Amen. Every day, Amen. several times a day. Amen. Don't wait till she asks you for a hug. Just go up and just hug her just Amen. because, just because. And I'm, I'm talking to the young ones, but Pastor Roz, Minister Gigi, Sister Crystal, Tamisha, Shauna, y'all can do this too every day, Brother Lawrence, Brother uh, Mario. Minister Terrence, y'all can hug your parents as often as you can. Hug your mother affectionately. Amen. We need hugs. Amen. Damien, Amen. Chantrell, Chris, Amen. Wayne, Gigi, if y'all out there listening, we need hugs. Amen. Maxine and I need some hugs. Amen. We need to know that we are, we are needed. And watch what you say to us, y'all. Y'all be careful. Watch what you say to us. We hurt easily. We fragile. So we... We think about, I, I sing that song to my, both of my boys all the time. For the nine months I carried you, well, uh, for the nine months I carried you, stayed up and prayed for you, no charge. So they like, mama, but every time when I, they start to get on my nerves, I start singing that song for them. So, um, but anyway, watch what you say to us, children. Watch what you say to your mother. Uh, and then listen to them. Listen to them attentively, y'all. Listen. Listen to your mother. Even though you might think that we don't know what's going on, but stop working your phones and, 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 and doing all that stuff while we're talking to you. When a mother's talking, it's very, very important. Every detail about e we know every detail about each one of our kids. Whether y'all believe it or not, we know you. So take the time to 